the conductor. So again, the light hits it, it converts it into electricity. Okay? Now, the thing to remember is that these sensors are not sensing the colors, okay? These colors have various brightness value, and that's all that's being censored. Uh, sorry, all that's being um, captured and, and passed along and turned into a signal. Okay, so I've tried to represent that here by, by going into black and white. So white being bright and black being dark, okay? So you can see that uh, our blue sensor is going to get um, a lot of bright areas where it was actually blue in the original image and, and so on through here. Okay, so once it goes through the prism block, goes into a CCD or a CMOS, then we probably need to amplify the signal a little bit. So we do some processing, okay? We amplify the signal, uh, we'll probably digitize it, we'll talk a lot about digitizing later, sampling it, quantizing it, and we do a little extra that I'd like to talk to you about right now. Okay, we do not take that red, green, and blue signal and put it onto tape. Now, there are some uh, live situations where we actually take a red, green, blue signal right out of the camera, um, generally uh, for chroma keying or such. But usually, we will create different components than red, green, blue. Okay, now why do we do that? Well, why is a good question. Why is actually a letter that stands for luminance, okay? And what we do is we actually add red, green, and blue, and of course you saw that we get back to white, so we get back to a brightness value, which is luminance, and it's represented by the letter Y. Uh, I'll actually show you the math in a little bit. So, but why do we do that instead of just going on with red, green, and blue? It's actually because our eyes are much more sensitive and much more critical of the value of light in terms of its brightness than they are to color. And so we actually want to save the bulk of our bandwidth for luminance information or brightness information. Okay, so we actually want the brightness channel by itself there. Now, we actually could do the brightness and then pick any other two colors and do the math and get it back. But we don't do that either. We actually take our red value and our blue value and we subtract our luminance value from it. Uh, this gives us a negative number, it gives us a smaller number, and what that allows us to do actually is work that into the, uh, the encoding uh, at sort of a different phase, okay? It, it's actually going to be easier for us, and again, it kind of decreases the bandwidth that we're going to take up with our signal for color, okay? So these are called color different signals. So you've got Y, your luminance, and then you've got R minus Y, which is often called CR, or chroma R, or color R, and B minus Y, or the chroma for the blue channel, okay? So I promised you just a little bit of math here. So remember that green plus blue plus red equal the brightness, okay? And so really we're just looking at some fairly basic math. There's a little computer chip doing it all for us, okay? So um, when we actually take something like uh, B minus Y, then we can actually know what the green and red are, and when we take R minus Y, we can know what the uh, blue and green are, and then by that we can kind of extrapolate as to you know, what each individual one is, okay, when they get converted back at your television set. Okay, so now we've actually taken our signal through the lens. We have focused it, uh, we possibly changed the size with the zoom, we focused it, we've sent it through the, the diaphragm, through the aperture, it's gone into the prism block, been split into three, hit 
our sensors, whether they're CCDs or CMOS sensors. And then from there, it gets processed. And finally, we need to store it somehow. Okay? Now, storage is going to be very familiar to you because a lot of the storage stuff we use, you use in your own computers. Okay, the, the key is that they need to be fast enough because there's a lot of information with video. So there are some video cameras out there that just record right to a DVD-R or some other optical disc. Okay? There are even SD cards now that are fast enough to record video. We've got a tape and a hard drive. Now, the tape you might think is a bit of anachronism because, you know, tapes don't move very quickly. But one of the reasons we can get away with that is because not only does the tape move, but if we're going to tape, the actual head spins around in the camera, the recording head. So unlike uh, the record head that you might have cleaned in your cassette deck, which just kind of sits, sat still, um, this is a spinning head, and it spins very, very fast. Okay? So there's the head. Um, just uh, a piece of metal with several little uh, connectors in it, which basically draw some stripes along our tape, the signals going through there, and so we actually get our different tracks, okay? Video and audio and some other tracks for time code and such things. So that's tape. There's the inside of a hard disk drive. Be careful with this when you go out to buy your own camera at some stage. Um, they're selling a lot of HDD cameras now. They're not actually high definition. They're hard disk drive for saving. So be careful with that. It's just like the disk that's in your computer. Um, uh, it might be faster. It might have a few more uh, revolutions per minute. And finally, there's the inside of an SD card, basically solid state. So therefore, it can be quite quick. Uh, the, the problem has always been how much storage is actually on those. Okay, so just a bit of a review. We collect the light, okay? Now you notice there's a microphone here. We also collect audio, and that actually gets mixed in with our video signal as well. But for now, we're just talking about how the camera's dealing with light. So we collect the light using the lens. We convert the light to electricity using that center part, the prism block that's actually splitting the light and then our sensors, which are going to convert it to electricity. And then we're going to store it. Okay? And those are the three basic parts of any camera and the parts that actually do the basic job of making a video camera work, allowing you to capture those moments and memories if it's personal or important events if you're working for a news organization or entertainment if you're working for a television or uh, a television station or network that does um, entertainment broadcasting. And that is the basics of how a video camera works. Um, I wish I could have been there with you. Uh, normally, I would actually have a camera and show you. We'd try to get a bit more hands-on. But these are just some of the basics, and hopefully I'll be there to join you and show you exactly how it works in person one day. Thank you very much for joining me.